Sim. <coughs> the liver pump we do after we've done gen general horror release. The diaphragm release exactly the way I've shown it to you before. And we would normally also do the large intestine release before we do the liver pump. That's so we should ensure that the hepatic fletcher of the large intestine is clear, which will enhance the effect of the liver pump. Two potential hand positions. We can come from the same side like this. This can be quite a good position, but it's that's a little that kind of hyper extension of the wrist is not ideal. So we can also come from the opposite side. This may be a little harder with a smaller practitioner and a larger client. The important thing is that the hands are really opposite each other so they can create a squeezing action of the lower rib cage where the liver is. So we make contact and we're going to give a rhythmic compression for about two minutes. Just... about one to two seconds per compression. And there's some research that I can't at the moment track down that shows that liver function tests improve after this technique has been done. Okay, so that's the liver pump. If we do the same thing on the other side, it becomes the spleen pump. It's also going to affect the pancreas and the stomach but it's conventionally known as the spleen pump. And again, there has been some research that su suggests that doing this will actually increase the um, leukocyte levels in the blood. So exactly the same pumping technique. Again, that will be done for 